Can't sleep? Don't want to sleep? Afraid to sleep? Are the windows closed? Are your doors locked? Did you check your closet? And under your bed? Maybe you should keep a light on in the hallway, just in case. Now settle in. Make yourself comfortable. Lay back. Close your eyes. And let me tell you a story. Escape rooms are meant to be fun. A way to challenge ourselves. Working with others to solve puzzles. Pooling our collective talents to crack the riddles that lead to success. But what if you found yourself in one from which there was no escape? A prison meant just for you. Your own personal hell. What would you do if there was no way out? Let me out of here. Ellie shuddered when she heard the door close and the lock click. She looked around the small room at the five other people who were sealed inside with her. It was your typical escape room. A hodgepodge of eclectic items decorated the walls and littered the surface of several tables and counters. Some of them were clues that needed to be solved in order to exit the cluttered chamber. Others were red herrings, distractions meant to misdirect. This one seemed more upscale than the escape room she was talked into visiting in the past. You have one hour starting now, an unemotional voice announced over hidden speakers. Ellie scanned the faces of the other prisoners. Oddly, she didn't seem to know any of them. Was she in the wrong room? She struggled to recall who had come with her, but couldn't quite remember. An alcoholic buzz seemed to hang in the back of her mind. Was she here on a date? A man approached her with a concerned look on his face. Are you all right? You look a little confused. Should we press the emergency button? He nodded toward a large, round, red button mounted on the wall next to the door they came in through. No, I'm fine, Ellie replied. I think I might have had a little too much to drink earlier. You and me both, he said, smiling. Come on, let's see if we can figure this out. The man put an arm around Ellie's shoulders and guided her to the table in the middle, where their fellow inmates gathered. Spread out on a black cloth were an assortment of square wooden tiles with letters on them. A-C-E-E-E-F-I-I-L-L-L-O-O-O-R-R-S-T-V Anyone good at Scrabble? asked a young man, heavily tattooed, wearing a knit beanie. This is going to take forever, said a woman with pink hair and piercings in her ears, nose, lip, and eyebrow. Ellie thought she also saw a stud anchored in her tongue. Let's start making words, an older man suggested. Ellie felt that all the people in the room were somehow familiar, but she couldn't quite place them. She wondered if her date had slipped something into her drink. She still couldn't remember arriving at the escape room place, let alone meeting the man who now had his arm around her waist, let alone what his name was. Hands reached out and started rearranging letters. Vile, face, roost, roly. Roly? A middle-aged woman asked. Yeah, like roly-poly, suggested the tattooed man. That's with a Y, the pierced girl said. The older man took charge and rearranged them one more time. Sell favorite core oil. Yeah, that helps, said the tattooed man. The middle-aged woman took a turn. L favorite color lies. What is that supposed to mean? The pierced girl asked. It's Spanish, the tattooed man explained. El favorite color lies. It means the favorite color lies. The pierced girl elbowed him in the ribs. Feels like we're getting close, the older man said. Ellie reached out and joined the last word to the first. Ellie's favorite color. Who's Ellie? The middle-aged woman asked. That's me, Ellie said. What's your favorite color? Red, she answered without thinking. But why would it be my favorite color? Maybe they personalized it for you, suggested the tattooed man. Is it your birthday or something? Ellie shook her head. Her date had left her side and was looking at a series of small, colored lockboxes arranged in a row. 
He picked up the red one. It has a combination lock. Four digits, he reported. Everyone looked at Ellie. How am I supposed to know? What is your birthday? The middle-aged woman asked. May 5th, Ellie answered. Her date dialed in the numbers 0505, then lifted the lid. She's a plant, the tattooed man accused. This whole thing is rigged. There's no way we could do this if she wasn't here. What kind of escape room is this? Well, at least we know she's the key to all the clues, the older man said. What's in the box? The Pierce girl asked. Ellie's date pulled out a toy bunny. It looked like it had at one time been stuffed, but now was a deflated, dirty old gray rabbit missing one eye. Kitty? Ellie asked. Looks like a bunny to me, said the tattooed man. Ellie took the toy from her date's hand and carried it to one corner of the room. She inspected it carefully. One ear was slightly longer than the other, and each paw was tipped with white fur. She poked at the piece of black plastic that was its nose and counted the whiskers sticking out from its cheeks. There were two on the left, three on the right. It was her toy bunny. She had named it Kitty not because she thought it was a cat, but because she liked the name. Kitty was lost on a vacation when she was a child. Her family was spending the week at a cabin her father had rented. It had a dock that extended out into the calm water of an icy lake. Her brother was teasing her one day and flung Kitty out into the water. Go get it, he had told her. But Ellie was afraid to swim in the cold water. She's going to drown if you don't go out and rescue her, her brother chided. Ellie simply watched Kitty slowly sink under the surface as it became soaked and disappeared into the murky water. She spent the rest of the day crying at the edge of the pier. Her mother finally came out to find out what was going on. Ellie told her what her brother had done, and she made him and her father take the rowboat out and try and find the tattered rabbit. But they never did. Come on, spill, the tattooed man urged. What does it mean? What's the next clue? I don't know, Ellie said. This is impossible. I lost this rabbit when I was a kid on vacation. There's no way it could be here. Well, obviously it's not the same rabbit, the pierced girl said. Ellie turned toward all of them, then looked at the floppy gray bunny in her hands. But it is. It's the same one. Same missing eye, same mismatched whiskers. Where did you go on vacation? The middle-aged woman asked. I don't remember. We rented a cabin on a lake. The older man approached one of the walls where there were half a dozen framed photographs. One was taken from the porch of a rustic log house, overlooking a lake with a pier extending out over the calm water. Like this? he asked Ellie. Ellie walked over to the picture and looked closely. Yes, that's it, she said. That's it exactly. Freaky, the pierced girl said. You're our golden ticket out of here, Ellie, her date said, putting a hand on her shoulder. Ellie shook it off. Stop touching me, she said. I don't know who you are. Everyone stared suspiciously at the man who had been hovering over Ellie the whole time. Wow, I guess I made a pretty lousy first impression. This is where you brought me on a date? she asked. You're the one who set all this up? How do you know so much about me? Where did you get this? she asked, waving Kitty in his face. Hey, coming here was your idea. I'm just along for the ride, he said reaching out to hold Ellie's shoulders. She backed away. Maybe you should leave the lady alone, the older gentleman said. Yeah, bro, step off, added the tattooed man. Hey, no need to get upset, Ellie's date said, holding his hands up in front of him. I swear, I have nothing to do with this place. Whoever set this thing up wasn't me. What's your name? Ellie demanded. He looked at her with a sly smile. You really don't know? Ellie turned away trying to collect her thoughts. I don't know anything. I don't know how I got here. I don't know who any of you are or why all these clues seem to be about me. Now that you mention it, said the Pierce girl, I don't remember coming here either. She scanned the faces of the other people in the room. They seemed equally perplexed. Do any of you? No one answered. Maybe we should just focus on getting out of here, the older man suggested. I've had enough, the tattooed man said. He strode over to the door they had come in through and slammed his hand against the large red panic button. Nothing happened. He smacked it a couple more times. Hello, we give up, 
let us out, he shouted. Without answering his plea, the monotone voice they heard before announced, You have forty-five minutes left to find your way out. This is messed up, the tattooed man said, shaking his head. So what do we do? the pierced girl asked. Solve the next clue, the middle-aged woman replied. She walked over to the photo of Ellie's childhood vacation spot. There were four letters in each corner of the frame. She read them aloud. X, Y, Z, and M. She turned to Ellie. Does that mean anything to you? Ellie shook her head. No, she insisted. Nothing. Think, the older man urged. Initials? Some sort of code? Examine your zipper, man, the tattooed man said, laughing. The pierced girl elbowed him in the ribs again. Look around the room, the older man suggested. Do they spark any connection to something else? Ellie sighed, signaling her opinion that the exercise was futile, but did so anyway. She meandered around the room, eyeing the various objects that cluttered shelves and covered counters, but nothing stood out to her. Then she looked at the table where they had started. The letters that had spelled out the first clue were gone, replaced with just four tiles. X, Y, Z, M. What the hell? asked the tattooed man. Who changed those? the pierced girl inquired. Everyone looked at the man they had thought was Ellie's date. Don't look at me. I've been standing over here the whole time, he said. There are numbers on these tiles, the pierced girl noticed. They're scrabble tiles, the middle-aged woman said. It's how you score your words. Eight, four, ten, three, Ellie said without even looking. Scrabble was her favorite game. Does that mean something to you? The older man asked. She couldn't connect them to anything from her past. It wasn't an old address or part of a phone number or a locker combination. Even so, something about them, the way they sounded. She surveyed the items again this time muttering the numbers over and over as she circumnavigated the room. Eight, four, ten, three, eight, four, ten, three, eight, four. She stopped in front of a pizza box and lightly touched the top of it with her fingers. A pizza? What the hell does that have to do with a pizza? The tattooed man asked. That was supposed to be enough to feed ten people. She said, recalling another memory from her childhood. She turned to the others. When I was little, I spent a weekend at my grandparents' house with two of my cousins. My grandpa ordered a giant pizza from this place down the street, and the three of us ate all of it. Three ate for ten, the older man said, putting it together. That's a stretch, the pierced girl said. You have thirty minutes left, said the disembodied voice. Ellie opened the pizza box. Inside was a game. It was played on an 8x8 grid with plastic circles that were white on one side and black on the other. The players took turns placing their discs and flipping over their opponent's circles where their color was sandwiched between two of the opposing color. There was a single disc off to the side of the board. Ellie knew exactly where to place it. After she finished flipping the circles to conform with the rules of the game, there was a capital letter T delineated by black discs. T the middle-aged woman said. She glanced back at the table, but the same four letters as before were still there. I don't see how that helps. There's another pizza box over here, the pierced girl said, pointing to a counter. Over here, too. Two of them, the tattooed man added. This is ridiculous, not Ellie's date stated. We're all assuming this is all about Ellie, but maybe that first clue was just a coincidence. He pointed to a framed portrait of an old woman wearing a red dress and a red hat. A plaque at the bottom of the frame was etched with the name Ellie. What about the rabbit? The pierced girl asked. Look, she admitted she's not thinking clearly. She doesn't remember coming here. She doesn't remember my name. Why are we going to believe she remembers some toy she lost 20 years ago? She probably saw the pictures on the wall and her mind created a false memory. He's right, the older man agreed. We just assumed it was all about her. Ellie shook her head. No, you're wrong. She looked at all of them. She was sure she had never met any of them, but their faces were all somehow familiar. Why are all of you here? She asked. What do you mean? We're doing an escape room, right? The pierced girl asked. The middle-aged woman looked concerned. To be honest, this isn't something I would normally do. I can't remember why I came here. 
Dude, I saw a movie just like this, the tattooed man said. A bunch of people were drugged and put into this cube, and they couldn't remember who they were or why they were there. And then one by one they died, until there was, we weren't drugged, the older man declared. I know who I am. Who? the tattooed man challenged. The older man opened his mouth, but the answer he was so sure of a second ago eluded him. I don't know my name either, the tattooed man admitted. Oh my God, the Pierce girl shrieked. We're all going to die. Who would do this to all of us? All eyes turned to not Ellie's date. Hey, the only person in this room who seems to know anything about herself is Ellie. She's the one we should be questioning. Good point, the older man acknowledged. Ellie shook her head. I'm telling you, I don't know anything. You have 15 minutes, the unsympathetic voice told them over hidden speakers. Think, the middle-aged woman said. You're the only one who seems to be able to remember anything at all. Is there someone who would want to hurt you? No, she insisted. I don't understand any of this. She raced to one of the other pizza boxes and threw open the lid. Inside was a chessboard with the pieces arranged to form the letter R. The next one was a checkerboard with an X spanning the corners. Each time she opened a pizza box, another one seemed to appear. Various items within taking on the shape of other numbers and letters. Three, seven, three, H. The tattooed man was keeping track. TRX373H. What the hell is that? What if you substitute the letter E for the threes and L for the seven? Asked the pierced girl. Trixela? He asked. Does that mean anything to you? The older man inquired. Not Ellie's date was standing in one corner, his arms crossed, smiling smugly. You have five minutes left, the voice reminded them. Shut up, Ellie shouted at the ceiling. This dude knows something, the tattooed man said accusingly. He approached Not Ellie's date and grabbed his shirt with one hand, while cocking the other into a fist. You said she brought you here. Who are you? I'm in the same boat as the rest of you. I couldn't tell you my name if my life depended on it. He's lying, the pierced girl said. You better start offering some answers, bro, the tattooed man warned. But not Ellie's day, just smiled. One minute remaining, the voice echoed. Is it me or is that lady's clock off? The pierced girl asked. Yes, the countdown seems to be accelerating, the middle-aged woman agreed. If we just wait for the time to expire, won't the door just open on its own? The older man asked. They all looked at one another. The tattooed man let go of not Ellie's date and stared at the door they came in through. Time is up, the voice informed them. Nothing happened. The door did not open. Ellie muttered the letters and numbers to herself, trying to make sense of them as she had done earlier with the Scrabble tiles. T X R. 373H. We're all gonna die, the pierced girl said with a tone of resignation. TXR 373H. Just give up, not Ellie's date said. You're stuck here with all of us. TXR 373H. What does it mean? the middle aged woman asked. TXR 373H. The lights dimmed. Now what? The older man asked. TXR 373H. The room fell into total darkness. TXR 373H. There was the sound of a lock being undone. TXR 373H. The door opened into a rectangle of blinding white light. TXR 373H. Ellie walked toward it, unable to see where she was going but feeling strongly that she had to get out of this room. She blinked her eyes against the brightness of the light. Shapes appeared and formed into people. Ellie, can you hear me? The older man asked. Ellie looked over at him. He was wearing a white coat and had a stethoscope hanging around his neck. She's awake, the pierced girl said. Ellie turned and saw the nurse taking her pulse. She was wearing pink scrubs that matched her hair. Can we talk to her now, Doc? The tattooed man asked. He stood at the foot of her bed, next to the middle-aged woman who was wearing a suit and a police badge on a chain around her neck. She really should rest. Just a couple of questions, the police detective insisted. The doctor nodded. Ellie? 
Do you remember anything about the accident? Can you describe the car that hit you? The color? A license plate number would be great, her partner said. TXR373H, Ellie said to them in a hoarse whisper. Seriously? The young officer asked. He pulled out a cell phone, hit a speed dial, and held the phone to his ear. This is Rodriguez. I need the registration for a plate. TXR373H. A moment later, he said, Really? Yeah, send me his driver's license photo. The officer hung up the call, then a few seconds later, tapped at his screen after an incoming message caused it to ding. The detective looked over his shoulder. She took the phone from his hand and showed it to Ellie. Is this the man who was driving? She asked. It was her not date from the escape room. That's him, Ellie said. Okay, enough, the doctor said. We'll get him, Officer Rodriguez promised. Don't you worry. He won't escape. Ellie smiled. Thank you for listening to Let Me Out of Here, written especially for the Bedtime Stories for Insomniac's Fiction Podcast by Rich Hosek. Please remember to subscribe on your favorite podcast app, rate us on Apple, Spotify, and Audible, and share these stories with anyone who enjoys audiobooks. By the way, my latest novel, Afterlife, A Rainy Day Investigation, is available now on Amazon and Audible. You can listen to the first book in this paranormal mystery series, Near Death, on this very podcast for free. Stop by bedtimestories.studio and sign up for our email list to be notified of new episodes and exclusive offers, and get a free bookmark. You can visit richhosick.com to learn more about the host of Bedtime Stories for Insomniacs. Thanks again, and all the very best.